Let church say amen. amen. Let church say amen again. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I challenge you, as I challenge myself on this day, to give God some praise. Give God some praise. In spite of your circumstances, God still did something for you that nobody else could do. And for that, we ought to give him praise. Amen. We are already in the mix of a good time. Amen. We had a great Sunday school as usual. But it's indeed a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Amen. We ask everyone to join in with us in our devotion. Amen. Jesus is on the main line.
Amen, amen. Jesus is on the main line. Just call him and tell him what you want. Amen. Our scripture this morning will be coming from Psalm 62 in its entirety. And it reads as follows. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I should not be greatly moved. How long will you imagine mischief against a man? You shall be slain, all of you. As a bow and wall shall you be, and as a tutoring fence. They only consult to cast him down from hence ex excellent, excellently. They delight in lies, they bless with their mouth, but they curse inward. My soul weighed down only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense, I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lot. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thy renderest for every man according to his work. I've read from you Psalm 62 in its entirety, God's word for God's people. Amen. 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 God. Oh God. God on high. Our Father. Our merciful God. The God that sits high. The God of Abraham. God of Moses, God of my father and my mother, here I am, God, as humble as I know how to be, oh God, thank you, thank you, oh God, surely you didn't have to do it. But oh God, you did. Oh God, first of all, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for how you watched over me last evening as I slumbered and slept. Oh God, thank you this morning for how you woke me to this morning light. Thank you, Lord. Surely you didn't have to do it. Oh, yet God, but you did. Lord God, that bed that I was laying in could have been mine. Found on rest and spot. Yeah, 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 yeah. But oh God, you saw fit. Yes, Lord. Oh God, you saw fit to wake me up this morning. Yes, Lord. And for that, God, I'm thankful. Lord, I'm thankful for how you just touched our lives today, God. Oh God, I'm thankful. God, you are a merciful God. Oh God, I'm thankful for how you brought me this far. Lord, I'm thankful for your grace and your mercy. Truly, you're able. Truly, you're omnipotent, God. You're all knowing and all powerful. You're the first and the last. Thank you, O oh Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for, for all you've done for
for us. For the bad and for the good. Lord, I thank you for the trials and tribulations you brought me through, God. Lord God, because I know that with that being said, God, it makes me stronger. It allowed me to put my trust only in you. Lord God, for your word says, trust in your word. Oh, have mercy, Jesus. Have mercy, God. Lord God, touch us this day, God. Touch us this day, God. And we give thanks for yesterday and hope for tomorrow. Lord God, thank you. Lord God, touch us all right now, Heavenly Father. Lord, because I know somebody out there, Heavenly Father, is, is in their need for you, God. I'm standing before you right now, Lord, because I know I need you. I need you, God. I need you when I'm asleep. I need you when I'm awake. I need you at work and at play. Oh, Heavenly Father, touch us, God. Touch our pastor and the first lady, Heavenly Father. Lord God, give him the fruit of the limbs, Heavenly Father. Lord God, let him come forth with a word for us, oh Heavenly Father. Oh God, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For how you brought us. Thank you, God. Oh God. Touch the sick and afflicted right now, God. Touch the ones behind prison walls, God. Touch the ones in hospital rooms, God. Touch the ones that are homeless, God. Touch the ones that are sick and afflicted, God. Touch the ones that don't know you to part of their sins, God. God, touch them, God. Touch our government officials, God. Touch the children of our, touch the children right now, God. Touch our mothers, God. Touch our fathers, God. Touch us all, God. Lord God, we need you. Sometimes we don't know we need you, Lord God, but we need you. We need you right now, God. Times get rough, God. Times get hard, God. But yet, God, we gonna put our trust in you, God. Oh, have mercy, God. Touch us right now, God. Touch us one. Touch us all, God. Lord God, we need you. You can words that I cannot say, Lord God. You know, you know my heart, God. You know my heart, God. Lord God, when you knew me before I knew myself, oh God. Oh, have mercy, Jesus. Oh, have mercy, Jesus. Touch us all right now, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.
is said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We got a lot to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. I rose this morning to give you the announcements of the week. Bible study, Pastor does live on Tuesdays on Facebook Live, usually at either 12 or 6, but he'll put a notice out there along with our uh, Bible study notes. So um, that's on Tuesdays. We have in-house Bible study on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. from 6 to 7, from 6 to 7. Very, very rarely do we, do we go past 7. Um, I encourage you. If you are not in study of the word, please come out for our Bible study. It's so important for us to know how to live like God will want us to live in this day and time. Y'all, my mama used to say time winding up. And my mama been gone for almost 20 years. So if it was winding up back then, we closer. <laughs> so we, uh, we need to be in the word of God so that we know how to live and treat each other. Amen. Amen. Um, Sunday morning worship is at 10 o'clock. We have Sunday school at 8 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Y'all, I uh, told Pastor this morning, I say, you just, y'all beat us up every time we come in. <laughs> but it's the word of God, and it makes us look at us instead of looking at y'all. I have to look at me. And Pastor puts it so plain that, that I'm ashamed of me. <laughs> so, but we need to know these things so that we'll be able to fight the wiles of the devil, you know. And our children need to be here as well because it's going to come a time when children are going to have to choose between Christ and what's that stuff they do? Um, uh, PlayStation, whatever they be fighting on that. It's going to be a time. And if our children are not aware of who God is and the importance of him in our lives, they're going to make the wrong choice. And we're going to be sitting in heaven and they're going to be sitting in hell. Because it, it ain't two places to go. So I encourage you, get your children involved and uh, come out and learn the word. It's just one hour. We go to work every day. We go out to eat. We yes. go out to party. I don't yes. know about y'all, but I do these things. Yes. And if I can do those, I can be in a position to where I learn the word of God. I hate to hop on it every Sunday, but it's important to me, and it's important to me that y'all know. Amen. 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 Uh, choir rehearsal is immediately after the Bible study on Wednesday nights. We're out of here before 830. So we encourage you, if you are a choir member and you want to be, or you want to be a choir member, please come out on Wednesdays at 6. Be here for Bible study, then you can stay for Sunday's uh, choir rehearsal. Amen. Amen. Please remember we have a invitation on next Sunday. We need a count of the people who are going. We have transportation available. We will leave, I think, the Kroger uh, parking lot. Um, and we have a bus to take us. So we're encouraging everybody to ride the bus. Please see me, one of the deacons. Let us know if you're interested in going so we can, you know, so we'll know that we have enough room for everybody. Amen. Um, today, after morning worship, Sister Velvet Johnson wants to meet with all ministry leaders to um, do our event planning for next year. Remember, if your count, if your event is not on the calendar for next year, then chances are you won't be having an event. So we're encouraging you to please remain after a worship for just a little bit to uh, meet with uh, Sister Johnson. Uh, we will do our candy giveaway on uh, Wednesday night, immediately after the Bible study. So if you got kids, children, bring them out. And we'll do Bible study, candy, choir rehearsal. We'll be out of here by 8.30, amen. Uh, also, um, Hattie Lou is sponsoring a Christmas musical, which is, we're, it's, it's, I think it already started, or it's going to start soon. But we have purchased tickets for our Sunday school department. If you are a member of the Sunday, a faithful member of our Sunday school department, we uh, would like to know if you would like to go. It's going to be on Sunday, December the 8th. And what we plan to do is after morning worship, we'll go get something to eat and then we'll go immediately to Hattie Lou. So we need to know that as well. 
Those are our announcements for the week. Please govern yourself accordingly. Amen.
His grace alone. The parents and everyone, please stand and be directed by our urge to start the route back facing the wall and on to rhythm. Middle bow pan is for our passer A. Please don't forget about our passer A. You want to buy his lunch today? It's a pan right here for that. Want to give special support to your immediate support to your pastor is right here. Amen. Don't miss your blessing. Always be looking to bless the pastor. The Bible says, if you give him a cold drink of water, he will not miss your reward. It's blessing. In giving his blessings and supporting our pastor. Man, it's biblical. Traded the corn. And all this labor and he do. Money can't replace the hard labor that he and his wife have to go through for us. Amen. Always be mindful and be ready to receive that blessing by blessing the house. Amen. church of God say man the Lord is in his place I don't know about you but my soul is happy right now I so much going on. You say, Lord, I, I just need you to come see about me. Now that me no world feel like I'm all by myself. I need you. Jesus, come see about me. Because can't nobody help me like you. And then I stop and think about what I asked and who I just asked. Realize that I'm unworthy. <laughs> and I say that by God's grace, by His mercy, and by His grace, nothing but God's grace. Thank you, Lord. And if you know you're here by God's grace, you ought to just tell God thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Not by works, there's any man should boast, but with sinners saved by grace through faith. Thank you, Lord. You look beyond my faults and saw all my needs. Look past my frailties and bless me in spite of myself. Thank you, Lord. Old folks, if I couldn't say a word, I just waved my hand. And somebody just had to sit back and just wave my hand. What's waving this me up? I'm just waving my hand. Tell me, God, thank you, because you don't know what I've been through, but if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I'd be. God bless your heart. It's prayer time. That brother, love. God bless your heart, brother. love. We're praying today for all those that are bereaved, all that are grieved, all those that are sick, all those that are afflicted. You have a prayer request on your feet where you are? You have a special need. You may make your way to the altar. Praying for Sister Brooks, Sister Gloria Carter and family, Sister Fulton and family, Mother Ladea, Alma Ladea, Mother Dorothy White. And I'm praying for Brother T.J. Love and family. Always 
praying for the regular of the family. But I'm lifting up a special prayer request for my only blood niece going on home due to breast cancer, Melanie Stewart. Dear sister who's going on breast cancer, he died 20 months apart, Marsha Neely. We're praying for breast cancer survivors, thanking God. If you have a name you want to lift it up, lift it up now. God does hear and answer prayers. Just call the names. Yes, Lord. I'm going to ask you. Sister Judy Robinson will make her way down here. Amen. Take the throne of grace. As she leads us in prayer, pray with her. Pray hard. Our world is in trouble. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thanking you for your mercy and your grace and allowing us to be here on this morning. Father God, would none of us be here without you waking us up on this morning? Dad, I just want to tell you thank you. Father God, look like today on this morning I'm witnessing some miracles when some of my children walk through this door on this morning. Father, I can just pray. Pray. And pray. Lord, I don't know what brought them here on this morning, but I just thank you for allowing them to walk through those doors. Father God, help us. Help us. I've been going through so much, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And you are the reason why. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father God, I just thank you. Touch each and every one around this altar on this morning, Lord Jesus. Father God, we need you. We cannot go on without you. There's so much happening in our world on today, Lord Jesus. From illnesses, our children. Not knowing if they're going to walk through their, their doors in the evening when they leave school. Father God, help them. Lead them and guide them. Protect them, Lord Jesus. Like only you know how. Father God, and just don't forget about me. Don't forget about us, Lord Jesus. Help us, Father. Go into the mercy home, Lord Jesus. And just place your mighty arms around us. Because without you, Father God, I'm thanking you right now for everything that you have done and what you are going to do. Father God, I thank you for these ladies and these women in pink on this morning. Father God, I just want to tell you thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. But God. But God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father God, thank you for my church family. I've been going through so much on this year, and I just want to tell you, Lord, thank you. Thank you. And if this just sounds like a selfish prayer, Lord, forgive me. But I'm asking for your strength. And everybody that's around this altar on this morning, Lord, give us strength. As we go through this week, as we leave this church on this morning, give us strength. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you again. We thank God the Father, our Creator, God, Son, our Savior, and God the Holy Spirit, our Keeper. Amen. This is a day that He made, especially for us. Amen. Despite what you're going through, how you feel, you ought to be rejoicing. 
Amen. Because the only alternative to today, getting up today, would be not getting up. Amen. Amen. That's the only alternative. So despite <laughs> what today may bring, I'm going to tell God, thank you. This has been a strange year. A lot of crazy things going on, but with all, the Lord sustains us and he keeps us. Let me run through these things quick because I don't like talking much after I get through preaching. Uh, we need all the leaders to come down front for a calendar committee meeting uh, immediately after the benediction. We got to get a calendar together, you all, because God is God of order. Amen. We don't plan it well. It does not go well. We are supposed to give God our best. Amen. And your best requires planning. So especially if you're over anything that has going to have any kind of program this year, next year. Amen. It needs to be on our calendar so the people can know and we can make adjustments. And we don't want everybody running over each other this year. We got so busy that we couldn't catch our breath about four months. And we don't want that to happen next year. So again, we need to plan for this coming year. Also, on the second Wednesday, Sister Carla make it on December, we need to have a church conference. Now, y'all used to church meetings. I don't have church meetings. The Bible don't say nothing about no church meetings. It's a church conference. The church conference is time for the leaders to give an account of their stewardship. Amen. It's time for us to give an account of our stewardship to look back to see if we've done what we promised to do. Amen. I have discovered that when we put ourselves on the spot, we don't fuss and fight. Amen. Because all of us have fallen short. So again, whatever you're over, make sure you all come together and meet and you're able to give church account of your stewardship for last year and then tell us what your plans are for next year because you ought to be planning to do more next year than you did last year. Finally, on next Sunday, we're going to New Hope Missionary Baptist Church in Laws Hill, Mississippi. Amen. We're going to have a bus leaving in the Kroger parking lot at 12 noon. Now, pray brothers and sisters, that you all can go with us. You do go with us. Amen. Dr. Bessie Tables asked me to be her pastor, and she said, no matter where I am, she want me to still be her pastor. We went down there, I think, before the pandemic, and we got to go one time, and I, she asked me again, please come, and I told her I would be there. And so we're going to try to get out of service. It was the first Sunday early enough. We, I plan to be out here by 11 15, as a matter of fact a sermon that next Sunday and we can get to Kroger and take off from Kroger at exactly 12 o'clock. We've got some other people from St. Matt Matthews who want to go with us so we'll stop along the way and get them. But please brothers and sisters, if you can, amen, go with us. It's just nice to be nice. Amen. And when people want to be a part of your fellowship, you ought to tell God thank you. Amen. 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 God bless your heart. It's preaching time. Come on my... Come on, my my made me lazy. I don't have to read no more. She's coming from Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Stand on your feet. As she reads unto you the word of life. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was known that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, and so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing one stick of the palsy, which was bore of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him from the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the stick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. This is Mark 2, 1 through 5, God's word for God's people. God bless you, God bless you. Scripture that I've dealt with 
many times. I want to use this thought this morning. I've got to get to Jesus no matter what. I got to get to Jesus <laughs> no matter what. I don't care when it is, what's going on, how it is, how high, how hot, how cold, how wide, how deep. I got to get to Jesus no matter what. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. He is a kind, compassionate friend. But if, if but I ask him, he will deliver. And in my griefs with me, he will blend. Tempted and tried, I need a great Savior. One who can help my burdens to bear. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. He all my cares and sorrow will share. Oh, how the world of evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. But I must tell Jesus he will enable over the world the victory to win. I got to get to Jesus no matter what. This hymn written by Elisha Hoffman reminds us that there's always a person who can take care of our cares. Jesus. Hoffman encourages those who are struggling, reminding them that they don't have to bear burdens alone, but they have a Christ to help them along the way. Psalms in 46 said, For God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in time of trouble. No matter what the burden, the Lord will be right by your side. One writer said, he's always stood by my side. God has always been my guide. When my friends walked away and turned back on me, he stood there right by my side. But we have a sin problem that separates us from the same God who wants to be by our side. God can, is holy and he can't stand the sight of sin. He must turn away. And the only way he can stand and look at our sin-stained lives is the blood of his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ. Jesus bridges the gulf of sin between God and man. In order to talk to God, I must have a close connection that comes through Christ. Who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. And so I need to maintain a close connection with the Lord in order to get to God. Isaiah 55, he says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. James 4 8 says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. But we have to remember that God does not owe us anything. And it is a gift and a privilege to even be allowed for a sinful person like us to be drawn near to a God who's sovereign and holy. Another writer said, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. 
James 1.17 says, But every good and perfect gift come from above. Let me tell you, good gifts are those gifts that draw us near to God. A perfect gift represents those gifts that draw God near us. Are y'all here with me? Good gifts draw us near to God and perfect gifts draw God near to us. And Paul says in Romans 8, he said, when we're close to God, he said, we're realizing in all things we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. And so in that same Romans 8, he said, therefore, we should let nothing separate us from the love of God. Since he's my wonderful counselor, I got to get to him. Since he's my burden bearer, I've got to get to him. Since he's my company keeper, my doctor in the sick room, my lawyer in the courtroom, I got to get to Jesus no matter what. And if I want his help bad enough, I'll do whatever it takes and go wherever I need to go to get to Jesus. Are y'all here with me? Some animals, when they're caught in traps, they want to get where they're going. And they can't get out of the trap. They will gnaw their own leg off if they can't find another way out. They'd rather lose a limb than be kept from where they need to be. And we ought to be that same way when it comes to getting to Jesus. Whatever holds us back, we need to gnaw it off. Y'all hear what I mean? Amen. The Bible says, if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better to enter into life with one eye than have two eyes and be cast into the hell fire. I came to tell you, it's better to go to heaven by yourself than to go to hell in a whole crowd. Come here, New Salem. Listen. Listen. Whatever it takes to get to Jesus, you ought to be able to put it aside. Sometimes you got to know all some friends. Sometimes you got to know all some family members. Sometimes you got to even cast away some church members. Y'all don't hear me. If you want to get to Jesus, because there are folk in your life who are smiling in your face, but they're trying their best to hold you back. To get, to keep you from getting to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. They'll sit next to you, eat up beside you in church. And every time the preacher finna tell you what you need to hear, they start talking in your ear about some junk. Amen. Hold your junk to the benediction. God bless your heart. In this text, I got to go. Jesus has been baptized by John the Baptist. In the Jordan River. John is now in prison. And he has been getting word about Jesus. And John's disciples are telling him, man, I don't know about this Jesus yet, cat. Because you locked up here in jail and he living large out there. Let me help you. It does not matter what you go through in life your life is not about you it's always about him are you always, are y'all hearing me and sometimes Satan will use what you're going through to take your mind off of him but he says in Isaiah 26 he said for thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in him. So no matter what you're going through, make sure you stay close to the Lord. Jesus' fame is growing as he's called his own disciples. He's beginning to cast out demons and crowds are following him everywhere he goes. But most of the folk who follow Jesus have an agenda. Are y'all here with me? Sunday is a day of praise and worship. But unfortunately, far too many folk come to church with agendas other than praise and worship. I'm going to leave that alone. 
That's for another day. Crowds follow him for various reasons. And more of them are showing up for physical healing than for spiritual salvation. Are y'all hear me? In other words, people are more concerned about their physical condition in this life than their soul in the afterlife. But the record said, what profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for a soul? Jesus said in Matthew 6, he said, take no thought for your life or what you should eat, drink, or what you should put on. He said, because the Lord knows you have need of those things. Don't you know if God thought enough for you to wake you up this morning, he's going to put some clothes on you? You think he woke you up to let you starve to death? He said, God knows you have need of those things. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. In other words, you need Jesus more than anything else. We don't act like it. Jesus healed a man with leprosy, which carried was a physical disease with religious significance. After that, everywhere he would go, there'd be standing room only. Now Jesus goes back to Capernaum, which is his base for his Galilean ministry, and he's preaching inside of a house. And there's standing room only. There's not even any standing room. Y'all, 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 hear with me. Now it's a shame that Jesus is preaching in a house and there's no room. And those folk are just meeting Jesus. And you got many so-called believers who claimed it on the battlefield for a long time, but the church is empty. Oh, y'all didn't come ball there. Then, there's no room inside or outside. Y'all here, y'all, y'all still here. But despite there being no room, inside or outside, here come four men carrying a fifth man in a bed. Now, word is already going out wherever Jesus shows up. There is no room. Y'all, 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 here with me. Now, can you imagine Black Friday in Walmart? I'm in the house. They got 85 inch flat screen TVs, 4K. For a hundred and fifty dollars. I hear you going for I hear you. But you in the bed and you can't walk. And you heard it's packed in Walmart. Say, man, they got the fire department and the police out there directing the traffic because these folk can't try to get in the Walmart. How many of you all got four friends who will come in your house, pick up the bed? Now, now look, ain't going to need to get no car because it's too much traffic. And they say the quick way to get you in the store is just to carry you in. How many of you all got four friends? That will do that for you. And how many of you all will be willing to go in your pajamas in your bed and be carried in the Walmart? Y'all hear me? But these men said no matter what we face, we got to get to Jesus. We let toothaches, headaches, heartaches, vacations, us days, spa days, any kind of day. 
will take us away from the Lord. Can I get, we, can I get y'all this? I'm going to derail this sermon, but I, I preach it next Sunday. Your most dangerous day is your off day. That's a dangerous day. See, on your off day, you're more likely to get run over or shot or anything on your off day because you're goofing off. See, you safe at work. Y'all remember Friday? What's his name? Craig got fired. On his off day. On his off day. <laughs> on his off day. <laughs> and because he got fired on off day, he had time to smoke weed with Smokey. And after he smoked weed with Smokey every Friday, this Friday, that Friday, next Friday, last Friday, Friday, next, every Friday was a bad day. Y'all here with me? David's worst day was an off day. When he sat on the rooftop. <laughs> Getting in something he had no business. And you're more likely to get in something you ain't got no business on your off day. Shoppers, shop more than off day. Spenders, spend more than off day. Gamblers, gamble more than off day. Drinkers, drink more than off day. Y'all act like they ain't telling the truth in here. If I'm lying, say, Reverend, you lying. And I'll take my seat. Despite this man's diagnosis, he was not too sick, and they were not too tired, and it was not too crowded for them to get to Jesus. They said that we have a problem. We have a problem. And Jesus is the only one that can fix it. And no matter what, we got to get to Jesus. Y'all hear me? Despite the obstacles. They had a bed in a body. But we got to get to Jesus. Yes. We got a hard course and a hard crowd. But we got to get to Jesus. We got a long climb and a hard cut. But we got to get to Jesus. We got big ropes with great risk. But we got to get to Jesus. And if you make up your mind that no matter what's on your life, I got to get to Jesus, you will find the same success that these men found. First of all, to get to Jesus, it takes the right companions. I just ask you, how many of y'all got friends who would take do that for you? Many folk talk to talk, but few walk to walk. And seldom with someone carrying you. Only walk. Most of us never know who we're dealing with. Until the real storms come in our life. Y'all hear me? You see, during a storm, your friends will fail. During a storm, your boo will bail. During a storm, your road dogs will run. Now, y'all hear me? Far more, you got far more friends on payday than you got on bill day. See, when your check come, everybody answer the phone. But when your bill, you won't nobody answer. Child, AT&T, I don't know what to say about these phones. No. <laughs> you can have an accident in your car, and the Negro ride with you be the one to you. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Make sure the ones who are supposed to be pulling you up are not the ones pulling you back. You need to watch how they're holding the rope. Some of them got the wrong grip. Some folk will give you up for it, give you a dime and then ask you for a dollar. And in spiritual matters, you got to know who around you. Y'all hear with me? This man had friends who were willing to bear his burdens. That's the friend, y'all, who will bear his burden. Not in an insignificant way, but in a significant way. 
It's one thing for me to come get you in my car and take you to the doctor. It's another thing for me to carry you on my back and to the doctor. I need y'all to get this now. I, I, I'm, I'm going to try to hear what we got here. Now, if you call me, I don't mind coming to take you to the doctor. But if my car ain't running, I'm going to say, well, brother, I ain't got no way. Well, you got two legs, ain't you? I'm going to leave that alone. These are the kind of friends you need. You can tell what folk think of you by what they invite you. Y'all just missed what I said. You can tell what folk think of you by what they invite you. Huh? Invite you to the Super Bowl party. Invite you to the club. Invite you to the casino. But have they ever invited you to church? I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you alone. If you got folk in your life who always invite you to dark places but never to the light, I I, 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 I suggest that may not be your friend. Man by the gate called people had the wrong companions. Watch this. They dropped him off at the temple but never took him in. Huh? Man by the pool of Bethesda. Well, at the pool was some sick folk. But they never helped him get in, get in there. One with this of blood. Thought the doctor were friends. The insurance might have ran out. Are y'all with me? But this man had the right companions. They were not just ride or die. They walked the talk. Are y'all here with me? And to verify his companion, Jesus asked two questions of the fellow with him. He said, who do men say that I am? In other words, I know y'all hear the gospel. Who do men say I am? And they started telling what they've been hearing. But then Jesus asked the second question. But who do you say I am? See, the next time Negro comes tell you what they said, ask them, well, what did you say? Because the folk who told you about me must have felt comfortable for some reason telling you. Are y'all here with me? He had the right companion. One who would bear each another's burden, one who would pray for one another, who would deny themselves, take their cross and follow Jesus, who would never leave you nor forsake you. And they would run all the way. The record is the friend, Jesus is a friend who stick closer than the brother. Why the song say, What a friend. But not only did he have the right companions, he had to have the right congregation. See, it's one thing to have the right folk bring you to church. They let me bring you to the right church. Because it's a messy folk in here. Boy, y'all are looking at me real crazy. Don't throw, don't throw that in there. Now, sit down. <laughs> Everybody know who Jesus is. Everybody in here who look churchy are not Christians. Are y'all welcome? Hear me? As a matter of fact, in case you don't know it, Jesus is not welcome in every church. Hmm? Some folk got egos and personalities so big there ain't no room for Jesus. When you walk into the church, the preacher got a bullfrog in his throat, and it's all about God. <laughs> and every time you turn around, he's Wiping the toe, his red stasis off. Constantly adjusting them gold cufflinks, gold ring, and smile all gold now. 
That Negro ain't there to talk about Jesus. <laughs> he pulled the robe off so you can see that red suit he had on. Are, 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 are you all hear me? Some of us got egos so big that there's no room for Jesus in the church when we show up. See, y'all supposed to stop praising Jesus and start praising me. Are y'all here with your red bottoms on? Jesus. How many of y'all know? I'm like, listen. Even when Mary and Mark, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple, when they left the temple, the Bible said they looked for Jesus three days. They thought he was among the kinfolk. But they went through the whole family and nobody knew where Jesus was. Let me ask you a question. How many folk in your family know where Jesus is? Then, do you know? When Mary got back to the temple and found Jesus, she started setting him out. And if, and if, if Jesus' mom was sitting out in church, you know the folk in there set you out. Y'all hear me? I got to go. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together, church and green on any good thing, there I am in the midst. This man had friends who wouldn't go to his house Take hooks and put them on his bed. Put the straps on his shoulder. I don't know how far they walked, but they did it. And when they got near the house and saw there was no room, they didn't turn around. They didn't give up. They said, we got to get to Jesus. So they got a ladder and laid up on the house. And they carried the man up the ladder. Now y'all get this, and, I, and I, I, I'm going to be through here in a second. They got a man on a bed. You know, when the animals be, they make sure they stretch the level to keep you sliding off. You got to get four men up a ladder. Carrying a man on a bed, and he not slide off. Y'all, can, can you imagine how hard that is? The ones on the front holding up, and the ones one in the back holding up, and one on the front stooping down to keep the bed down. Y'all, y'all ain't with me. Then they get to the rooftop and there's no way in. Another reason to give up. They couldn't have gave up because they had no transportation. They could have given up because they could there was two men folk outside. They could have given up because there was no way in the building. After they climbed the rooftop, they could have given up right there. So I'm tired. Anyway, let's go home. But guess what they did? They took a saw and a hammer and cut a hole in the top of the building. This was somebody's house. <laughs> I'm going to go, y'all. Listen, you cut the hole, we're not cut the hole. Get my shotgun. When the bloody nigga on the top of my house cutting a hole in my house, it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Are y'all getting this? Yes, sir. These men, after all this, like they cut the hole. And they didn't have any levels or any wheels. With the strength of their hand, they lowered the man down. They kept lowering the man until Jesus could see him. I'm about to shout, y'all. They weren't worried about Jesus seeing them. Preach this thing, brothers. They're on the roof. They are concerned about getting their sick friend to Jesus no matter what. When you in God's service, it's not about you. It's about serving the Lord. They had the right companion. They had the right congregation. And they had the right conviction. Why in the world? 
John. Go to that man's house walking. Pick him up in the bed and talk dead weight all the way to the house. What would make you after that long journey fight through the crowd? And they wasn't trying to make no room for you because they trying to get to Jesus themselves. Yes. Y'all know, you, you know, when the line long, folk would jump on you for skipping. Yeah. Oh. These men got this sick man in his bed saying no matter what. Yes. I got to get to Jesus no matter what. Yeah. Then they couldn't find a way in. What would make them risk injury to themselves? Carrying a sick man up a ladder, putting their separate wrist, cutting a hole in the roof. Yes. Then leaning over with the possibility of falling in themselves. But they're trying to make sure the man doesn't fall. Y'all don't hear me. Yes. Amen. And the man they got to get to Jesus. Find yes. well, what would you go through? What you go through to see? This man, Jesus, a man you never met before, a man who hadn't done anything yet in your life. All you're going on is what you heard somebody say. I believe that they wanted to, to see Jesus because somebody told him there was a man by the river giving sight to the blind. I believe they went on to see Jesus. Because it may have been the man that, that the same man took two fish and five barley loaves in the middle of nowhere and fed five thousand men plus women and children. I believe they had to be the Jesus. Because Naaman told him, he told me to go dip myself in the nasty water seven times. On the seventh time, I came up all right. Ain't God all right. I believe that if man was made up, I got to get to Jesus because they met 10 levels. They say, we saw Jesus and they said, go show yourself. And we were made whole on the way. I need to help preach for y'all. I believe that they went to see Jesus because they heard Mary say, I was at a wedding in Canaan. And the wine ran out. But I got to Jesus. He took the water and turned it into wine. Yeah, my long. Maybe they met a man who had laid by the pool for 38 years. And Jesus showed up and said, Wilt thou be made whole? I ran, took on my bed and walked. Whatever the reason, they were convinced that Jesus could do what no other power could do. Ain't God all right? And if you have a sign that you got a problem that can't nobody solve, I recommend Jesus. But sometimes you got to climb the high mountain. Sometimes you got to reverse the lower valley. But I heard David say, Yeah, though I walk through the valley, for the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. I kind to get to Jesus. Thank God, all right, because I know when I get there, everything gonna be all right. Yeah, my Lord, look at my testimony. The reason I know that He can do what no other power can do. The record is that God had a problem and no man could solve him. How in the world can a same man who is in sin by another man without sin? And God, all right, he called out. He couldn't do it. He called Abraham. He couldn't do it. He called Noah. He couldn't do it. He called David. He couldn't do it. And God said, well, I know what I do. I got to get it to Jesus. 
the Bible said uh, that Jesus called uh, from the backside of Calvary uh, said here I am uh, send me out go uh, Jesus uh, stepped on the trail of nature wrapped himself uh, in earth and flesh uh, came all the way down all the two generations uh, and gone all right uh, and if Jesus came down uh, I got to get to him uh, tabernacle here uh, 33 long years uh, cutting a loose camera tongue uh, healing the sick uh, and raising the dead uh, and gone all right uh, I got uh, to get to Jesus uh, and gone all right uh, you don't know my story uh, and you don't know my glory uh, but I got her to get to Jesus uh, so I don't look uh, like I would have been through her. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, I'm so glad when I got there uh, that Jesus uh, laid his hand on me. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, I need some witness here. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, I heard by the mails uh, on the Jericho Road. Uh, and I got to get to Jesus. He cried, Jesus, uh, now son of David, uh, have mercy on me. Uh, Jesus touched him, uh, and he got his sight. Uh, I hear him sing of uh, amazing grace. Uh, how sweet the sound uh, that saved the wretch, uh, just like me. Uh, I was but lost, uh, but now I'm found. Uh, I was blind, uh, but now I see her. Uh, and God all I saw a woman uh, who had an issue uh, for 12 long years. Uh, she made up in her mind. Uh, I got her uh, to get to Jesus uh, and her testimony. Uh, I touch her uh, the hill of the gun. Uh, I can hear her sing, uh, oh, it is Jesus. Uh, yes, it is Jesus. Uh, it's Jesus uh, in my soul. Uh, boy, I have touched uh, the hill and his blood has made me whole and God alright I'm so glad that one third in a little shotgun church I went down I stooped down and drunk the living water y'all don't hit me and ever since that day ever since that hour I got a friend who think it closer than any Ain't God all right? One day to eat, they put holes in his back. But the H O L E in his back made my back. The H O L E, y'all don't hear me. They put 72 holes in his head. The holes in his head made my mind whole. Y'all don't hear me. They put holes. Hand and holding his feet, uh, those holes uh, made me whole. Uh, they put another hole uh, in his side, and that hole uh, in his side made me whole. Uh, Y'all don't hit me. Uh, they took Jesus, uh, put him in a hole uh, behind the hole, uh, and the same Jesus uh, made me whole. You don't know. Uh, He raised me, and I was next to nothing. 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 Separate me from the love of God. Not the grave. Not death. Some bad moment. Some glad morning when it's all over down here. When I can't sing no more. When I can't preach no more. When I pull my Bible, stick my sword in the sand of time. Study a while no more. The Lord gonna meet me in the middle of the air with two wings to bear my face. Two wings to bear my feet. Go away, go fly away, and this so well, this so well, I'm gonna step my way, say goodbye, sorrow, step my way, no more crying, step my way, no more heartache, step my way, no more death. I need somebody to help me live there. Ain't God alright? Somebody say it. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, 
And if you say help me, please don't block me. Move out of my way. Don't try to stop me. I got a race to run. And I'm running by pain. At the finishing line. I'm going to see God pay it up. When I see you, ain't God all right? When I see you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 The wind down, call him and stand. I have already come. It was grace that brought the saved of God. And praise. Don't leave me home. No more dead. No more crying. No more heartache. No more pain. Nothing but joy. Nothing but love. Nothing but peace in that land. Do you want to go? Do you want to go? Do you want to go? Y'all. Go low. Go Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I never could have made it without you on my side. You were there. You were there, you were there, yeah! I was hell of a nigga, I couldn't feel sometimes, but every now and again, I can feel the spirit moving in my heart. Thank you, Lord, thank you. Listen, this is important, you all. I never thought that 
I get my only blood niece. My only blood niece. The only one died. 52, I think she might have been. 40 for what? Fortune of 40, y'all. And my sister, 59 years old, they had 20 months of heart breast cancer. And so I'm well. I don't wear pink normally, but I suppose they have my fingernail painted pink, my mark, my melon. But I do have this down on here. It's pink. So, <laughs> listen, come on. Come on, Sister Bell. God bless y'all. To our pastor and our first lady and new lady family, on behalf of our pastor, <clears throat> thank you, Lord. Uh, can we have Sister Judy to please come down?
it was truly yeah. an amazing journey. Because guess what? I'm standing here today. Yeah. Yeah. Like said, I have my good days and I have my bad days. I had a really bad scare earlier this year. But I'm standing here. Amen. Again, I want to say nobody but God. Nobody but God. And to the women and to the men, I can only tell you to trust your bodies. Start early. Because that's the key. Early. Start early. If you're feeling any type of way, just start early. And Lord knows. And I got to say that. When I was diagnosed the first time, I wasn't a strong believer as I am now. I had been to the doctor and again, I'm just thinking, you know, I'm gonna get the normal phone call that, you know, everything is fine. You, 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 everything, all your tests came back positive. Everything is okay. But this one particular day, it was in the evening. And my doctor called. It was my OBGYN because it wasn't my regular primary doctor. And I was driving home. I had just gotten off work. For some reason, I, I didn't have my radio on. It was just quiet in the car. And when my phone rang, I seen the doctor's office. I was like, oh, again, I'm going to get my results. Everything is fine. And she said, are you driving? I said, yeah. She said, can you pull over? I said, I need to pull over. She said, I would prefer that you pull off the whole Thank you. And when she said what she had to say, I knew then that I was going on a journey like no other journey I had ever been on before. And the thing about it is that I held it back from my family. I didn't tell them like I should have. It was a battle that I kind of fought alone. They knew something was wrong, but they didn't know what was wrong because I didn't want them to feel the pain or what I was about to go through. But I remember then I was in a relationship with the young man and I told him, I said, I had been going through some things with him and I told him, I said, look, I'm gonna tell you what my doctor told me. If you're not gonna be with me on this journey, then I have to let you go. Yeah. Woo. That following week I witnessed something that I knew that he wasn't gonna be with him, with me on this journey and I let him go. And I've been going forward and going strong ever since. So I say to you, Trust your bodies. Trust what you feel and what you know. Get tested early because it definitely pays off. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. I love you. You say thank you all so much. I don't know. I don't know who behind this, but I believe it's uh, Sister Mary back there. Can I get you girls to stand? I've been trying to get them to come to church. They're here today, and I just want to thank them for coming. I got grandbabies here. I even got a great grand here. Thank y'all for coming so much. Y'all come up here and uh, give Pastor y'all right hand and fellowship before y'all leave back this door. Then we're going to get y'all back in this church. Thank you all so much. updating our membership list. They're back there on the table. Please grab one, fill it out. You can bring it back next Sunday. Trying to have them all done by the end of the year. So please, ma'am, please, sir, if you're a member here, please grab one of those uh, membership forms and complete it. Thank you. Uh, we have one more step. Come on, brother. Uh, brother Darrell Douglas, would you please come down? Praise, 1 Peter 1, 3, praise, 
be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope. Amen. Amen. Let's give him a hand. Amen. Am I singing the birthday? Who gonna sing? She came because she'd be feeling so sick. I could not tell, but she pressed on. When you press on, the Lord will meet you when you're pressing. And I'm gonna say this: I'm going on home. Black women, if you can reach puberty, start against the mammogram. Listen to what these folks tell you. You the one paying your insurance. Get a mammogram. Because this stuff is setting in early and early, and the problem is most time and black women is more aggressive. And most time when the black time they find out you got it, you already know. They tell you what you own how old they have a mammogram. No, don't do that. You get a mammogram. And men, 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 if you got breast tissue, you get a mammogram. Y'all look at me crazy. I'm saying it again, men, if you got breast tissue, get a mammogram. And most of us got breast tissue, especially if you have been overweight. Listen, men have breast cancer too. I'm just telling y'all the truth. We got to start addressing some stuff in church that look like we scared to talk about. Amen. But uh, it's our children dying, our children dying. And um, I, don't, I, I just listened to her testimony, and I can imagine when they say pull over, when the doctor call you, tell you to pull over. I don't know about the pull over, you going around the road. <laughs> Not that let us stand. God bless your heart. If you <coughs> have anything for the county, please come out here and meet Sister Judy, you all. Again, at the church meeting, when we close the county, it's going to be closed out. Uh, I want me to put it because on the county because we're a small church and we can't do everything and we can't be having a program every Sunday. Something we can consolidate and make work better. So come down uh, and meet. Father God, we thank you for the eyes have seen, our ears have heard. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for those that are here today, dear God. We pray for those that are not here. Bless every heart and sound of my voice, every home represented here. We pray you will let our hearts be pricked through the word that penetrate us, dear God, take root and then grow in our lives. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest provide. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Uh, program heads, come on down here and meet with sister. Uh, anybody who over anything or planning anything, come on down here and meet. It's 
necessary. Please come on.